Hello, I'm Chris. This is Gross Models. Welcome to issue 70 of Build Your Own X-Wing from Diagostini. Um, more gears, more gearbox, more electronics as well. But yeah, we'll we'll get to that. Um, looking through the magazine, we're still talking about the Y-Wing. Um, yeah, I assume you can't talk about the X-Wing for 100 issues. So yeah, the Y-Wing takes up a fair few. It's another big ship. I feel like they're sort of teasing and testing the ground to see if people were that interested in it and they're going to bring out a part work of it next. I don't know. I, I think it's likely, but I don't know. Um, Evan Villain? I don't know. From Alderaan. Okay. Uh, that's an interesting looking organic type ship. Yeah. Right. Um, today's work. We're building the electric motor and gearbox. Uh, so we've built a gearbox before. So this, this is a smaller one. I believe this is for R2. Um, it says the gearbox is put together in a similar way to the one in stage 68, although it contains fewer gears. Uh, as before, it's important to fit the gears in the right order. Yes, you can't put them wrong because then it'd be wrong. Uh, so we're not worrying about the motor as yet. Another motor, basically the same again and the same sort of clip assembly. Uh, some different pieces there that are going to do different things. Don't know. Lots of screws, three different types. Gears, uh, springs, cabling, a uh, switch. So yeah, it's it's quite a complex build this one, but I don't think it's going to be too difficult. I hope. Uh, right, so we're going to start off with this piece here uh, and that one. Uh, it says the spindle that runs through the gear, so it's going that way up. There's a knurled end to that, so it's going to jam itself in quite tightly into there. I should expect. Yep. But that doesn't want to turn. That's interesting. Hmm. Uh, it says the spindle will come out the other side. Oh, right, so I've got to go in even further than that. So it doesn't want to turn at the moment, but now it will. Okay, we've got you. I've got you. So that's now turning there because that's going to be attached to something on the other side. Fair enough. Uh, right, then we are putting the spindle in the other hole. And then obviously we're going to be alternating the three remaining gears that we have. Uh, but these are going to go in the other way up. Yes, they're going to go in the other way up. So the first one goes on there. It does. It goes on there and meshes with the first one like that. Second one on there. And meshes even further. And then back over there again. So now you can actually see, hopefully, um, you can see if I turn this one at speed, the next one goes slower, the one back over here goes even slower, and the first one that I put in hardly turns at all. So when the motors are underneath is spinning it very quickly, the top one will move very, very quickly. I think that's the other way around. I don't really know. We'll figure it out. Um, but that looks now like that. Uh, then we're taking the cover, which has got two holes on it, uh, and getting it the right way around. They're going to go on there like that. Yes, the motor is going to attach to this end and it's going to turn that one very slowly. Make sure the cover fits flush all the way around. Uh, then we're putting in place with screws in all four corners. Uh, this one isn't so deep, so I can use my, my decent screwdriver for this. Uh, we're going to put it in place with these screws. So I've put in one. Putting in another, and another, and finally, the fourth one, and as ever, when all four are in place and lined up, we know it's all okay, we can tighten it down and make it all nice and secure. Now, I'm a little bit concerned that there's been no mention of any lubrication in any of these gears. Um, now they are plastic cogs, so they are to a degree self-lubricating, um, but a little bit of grease would have been quite nice, I think. Uh, again, I don't know. Um, it, it just makes it feel they might be some potential wear down the line. Uh, but that looks like that now. It does indeed. It looks a bit like that now. Uh, then we've got to fit the motor to it, basically. It's much the same as we did before. Except this time, when we're putting that cog on there, we are actually fitting it 
deeper. Uh, so it says use a pair of pliers, so I shall indeed grab a pair of pliers, being careful not to damage the end of the wires or anything. Push that down further. It's very tight. So let's get it all the way down on there first, like that. And then we'll see if we can't. Uh, there's probably a good place to push. Or maybe not. Right, I've got to push this down so it's almost level with that. So what I'm actually going to do is push down onto there rather than push down from there. Yeah, that lets it go down a chunk further. And then I can hopefully make it a little bit easier to go a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. So there's a little bit of play there. So it's not going to bind. But that should hopefully be sufficient for what they require of me. Uh, I'm not sure why it is like that. It's obviously just to do with the positioning of things in there. Uh, so let's get that one. It says that way around, so it's a different orientation of wires coming out of it than the last one. Uh, it is, yeah. Just checking to make sure I get it the right way around. So that will go into there. The clip will, once again, go over everything and should clip over there. Yeah, so that's obviously down far enough because it's meeting nice and securely. Uh, that fits over there. Use an X08 screw. I don't know which one that is. I've taken out the packet. I think it's one of these. Uh, let's have a quick look through. What was the ones that I just used? Were they all right? Uh, yep, they're all right. So no, it's the same, same as the ones I've been using before. The one they gave me loads of. That's going on to there to hold it all in securely. Uh, like that. So that's that. Uh, next up, that was that, that's that, that, that. Right, uh, we need this post. It's going to jam onto there. Right. <clears throat> that's why that bit's knurled. Because that's going to fit on there, like that. Go on there a bit further. There we go. So that is going to rotate a bit one way or the other when the power goes through. Okay. Uh, we're taking that along with the switch. Get it the same way around. They've got it like that. Uh, line up the switch next to the actuator this way around. Ah, oh, right. Okay. So this is going to be the switch is going to get turned on and off when that gets rotated around. So that fits over those pins like that. So as that goes around there, it's going to click the switch. Okay. Uh, take the dread contacts. Ah, this is where the R2 unit fits onto uh, the cover. Uh, looks like a cover and an X010 screw. I think that's the, uh, right, I'll have to figure out which one's which. Uh, right, so let's have a look. Is that we need as well? We've got a plus and a minus on there. So obviously the plus and the minus need to line up through there. So the plus is going to go on the plus side. Uh, they're just going in there like that, okay. So the plus is going through that hole. And the minus is going through that hole. Come on, don't be shy. There we go. And these are acting as contacts when R2 sits on top of them, because this is obviously where R2's foot is going to sit. Uh, so that's going on there. The cover is going over there. And we're using a screw to hold that together. Now, this is just going to be a tiny little screw. So I'll go for the short one. Uh, no, because that's got a thing to it. I'm going to go with that one. It's nicer that they're labelling their screws, but the fact that I took them out of the packet is my own fault. But it would also be nice if they did what they used to do and just give us sizes just to make sure we're getting the right ones. So 
Now that's going on there. I've got it the same way that they've got it. So we've got plus on that side and minus on that side. There we go. Right. So that's that. Uh, taking this assembly along with the gearbox. Uh, we need two of these screws, I think. Uh, yeah, so nine screws, that'll be those. And the two springs. Right, so what we're we doing with this? We're putting the springs over these posts. So the whole assembly is going to be up and down, depending on how R2 sits onto it. Uh, the contact housing goes over that. So that, again, is the whole thing is sprung like that. And then it's these screws that have got the... Uh, like the built-in washer over the top are going to hold it in place. So I'll tighten one down a bit and get the other one in place as well. Tighten that down even more. And we seem to have a lot of screws left over. I'm assuming we need those for fitting this to other things. But I don't think we're doing that today. So I shall put the screws that aren't being used safe and out of the way. Uh, yeah, indeed, that is the build assembly so far. Uh, that completes the assembly of the gearbox, as it says. So we've got lots of screws left over, which are fine. They're all the same. We've put them in the pile. We've got a few left over from previous issues as well. So another little assembly that R2 is going to fit onto. This is where R2's middle leg will fit. Um, I've got my stunt R2 here which is the one that I built from the, the test issues. So we've got the two contacts on the bottom of there and his middle leg joins up onto there. I haven't got the middle leg on, that's why. Okay, so that, that will go onto there, something like that, and they will make contact, something like that. And that will control the turning of R2 and everything else. So that'll be good. I'll look forward to that when it all comes together. Uh, the picture, picture on the back, why win? Who could have possibly guessed it? It wasn't what I thought it was going to be at all. I thought it was going to be the other thing that they were talking about, but oh well. Uh, so that's that. Um, if you do like the video, um, leave a comment. Let me know. Uh, let me know if you've got any complaints, observations, suggestions. Uh, I, I read all the comments on the videos and respond to most of them as well. So thank you very much. That was issue 70. Now we've got the long wait for more issues to arrive. Um, but it's getting there. This is all going to fit in the middle there, and we've got the back bit whole thing. And let, let me have a look. This is the back bit. That's where the wings are going to go. So Arthur, I think he's going to go on there. So this has got three mounting points. There's three mounting points there. Does that mean that this is going to fit like that? I think it just might. That will fit like that, and uh, then you've got this bit where the wings are going to attach. Uh, don't, there's four mounting points on that, and there's four mounting points on that, and a suspicious curve there that looks a bit like this curve there. So I think that is going to go like that. So, instantly, the five issues have come together uh, with only a couple of bits left over. So actually all joined together. We've still got the circuit board as well. So yeah, we're getting some meat into the, the belly of the beast. So yeah, I'm, I'm getting quite impressed uh, with the wings on the side there and the nose on that is going to be huge. So that's it for now. I'll put it away for a month and not worry about it for a little while. There's obviously no upgrades or modifications required or necessary to any of this. Um, so yeah, I shall see you soon for more of this and other builds. There's going to have a couple of part works in the go as well, um, which you may like to watch and follow along with. So thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye for now.